Hello, YTPC. Tis I, Chris the Prancing Piper. Come in and know me better, man. Well, how are you all? Been a while since I made a video. Um, and that's just how it goes. Hope you're all very well. I am also well. Something a little bit different today. Something that's been on my mind as of late. I've been thinking about changing the way I store some of my tobacco. And I just thought I would share some of those thoughts with you. Uh, disclaimer right at the front, I am not an expert on the chemical processes involved when tobacco oxidizes. I'm just not. Um, nor have I carried out blind trials on all of these methods. Uh, so what we have here is pieced together from my own experience from having stored tobacco for a good number of years and from that from what friends have passed on as well. Uh, without any further ado, uh, let's get started. So, first question you might have uh, if you're a newcomer, why would I want to sell her a tobacco? Why do I need to store it? And uh, the answer to that is, is simple, it's just to keep it at its best. To stop it from drying out and to stop it from oxidizing and losing flavor and that sort of thing. Um, if you're only buying a tin or a pouch at a time, then that, this isn't going to be a problem. But there are many reasons why you might end up buying more tobacco than you can reasonably expect to use in a short space of time. That could be you're buying in bulk to save money. The tobacco you're buying could be rare and only available, so you're buying several tins of it at a time or pouches. Uh, so there's a number of reasons why you can end up with uh, some tobacco. Okay. So, how should you store this tobacco? Well, this is, this is really going to depend on what your purpose for storing it is, how long you expect it to be stored. There are a number of different methods, um, and some of them much better than others, but depending on how long uh, you want to store it for, some of them might be excessive. Uh, so, as mentioned in the title, there's a very big difference between aging and preserving. Now, some tobaccos, and I have experienced this on a number of occasions, some tobaccos benefit from being aged. Um, and if they're not aged correctly, they'll be ruined. They'll grow mold or they'll uh, dry out or they'll just be ruined. They'll turn to dust. And what happens with this aging? You know, there's a number of processes going on inside the tobacco. And what can happen is some of the flavors can die down and you know sometimes that helps if there's a harsh edge on the tobacco and some of the some new flavors can sort of come to the forefront you know with more complexity or richness it doesn't suit every blend um and certainly i've heard it said that some of the tobacconists so the producers say that their tobacco is perfect to be smoked as is from the factory but some people do want to age their tobacco and have great success with that. Um, and some people just want to preserve the tobacco as it is, keep your tobacco as it is, until you're ready to smoke it. So those are two different things. And we'll talk about more about that as we go through the, the, the possibilities here. So I have this number of receptacles in front of me. And I have them arranged in my order of well order of preference not really order of preference uh per se well, sort of but order of longevity so the very worst these little candy jars they're they're worse i would say they're not all created equally you can get some bigger or smaller than others but this one for instance doesn't even have like a gasket or a seal so this really isn't sealed that's just a lid set on top even though it screws on it's still really not an airtight seal this is probably just as bad as just leaving it in your tin um, again it's it's very exposed to light um, I suppose I'll talk about that yes when you want to keep a tobacco you its enemies are heat and light and oxygen 
those are the things that'll age it. The oxygen will oxidize it, the light will sap it away, um, and the heat again will destroy it. So those are the things you want to protect against when you're, you're storing or selling your tobacco. Next, it's one of these like Chinese cartons. That's much the same as the glass. There's no real seal here. Um, it closes. It's good, good enough to keep your leftover Chinese in the fridge without it spilling everywhere. But it's not great. And generally, I, myself and many people favor glass over plastic. I know you can get plastic that's BPA free and not meant to leach, but storing your tobacco naked on plastic, it's not great. I mean, this is going to be better than nothing. If it's just an open pouch of tobacco, it'll be better than nothing to put it in one of these. Uh, but not super. Then, if, you, if you, us in the YTPC, we're big on our baggies, whether they're Ziplocs or this little style here. This has got a see-through front and a sort of metallic look, but it's still a baggy. And sometimes they either have a, a press lock, like this little clip, or a little zip. They are pretty good, and they'll keep your tobacco nice and fresh for uh, a decent amount of time. They're not great on their own. Um, eventually those seals will break and they'll let air in. So they're not for long-term storage, but they're certainly good enough if you want to have a couple of baggies. Uh, with all of these options at the start, they're all see-through. In fact, most of these are see-through, so you want to keep them out of the light. Otherwise, they will degrade anyway. The sunlight and the heat from the sun will degrade them. Next up is you have a slightly more robust Tupperware. Now, this is a strange shape one, but again, these come in all shapes and sizes. And where this is better than this previous one, this plastic tin uh, tub, is uh, it has a rubber seal. So this will be airtight. And this is a good, this is a sustainable one. They're pretty good. Um, you're possibly aware that a lot of people use Tupper doors now for storing their cigars in. Put a Boveda pouch in here, put some cigars. It will be good for a long while. Uh, again, it's plastic, not cedar, but I mean, for keeping the air out, these are pretty, pretty darn good. And uh, again, what I like to do is if I have a number of baggies and samples I've got, I put them inside a Tupperware like this. That just gives them a double barrier. Keep them in the baggies, write on them what they are, put them in a Tupperware. Those are great. Um, where we're going to take a step up now is when we get to glass. Say my preference is glass. And these are good for storing for months. In fact, you can store a pretty long time in one of these Tupper doors, these Tupperware, Tupperware containers. You know, you're, you're, you could store if you wanted to for a couple of years in one of these. Again, you might get flavor from the plastic, and I'm not exactly sure because I never really have. I've used them for cigars, but only when they're on a layer as well, a layer of cedar or, or in a box themselves. You've got Then you've got these like Beale Top Kilner jars. These are great. These are my go-to. If I get a tobacco in a tin, um, I like to put it in something like this. And not only are they better than this little jar, because look, I, can, I can't really get my fingers in here, and I can get my full hand, almost giant hand, in here. Um, but these have the little seal along the top. Now, these are brilliant. Where these feel, and again, the glass isn't going to flavor. and They're just really, really good. Then that's a nice airtight seal there. Where these feel is that sometimes these seals degrade over time. I have heard that people who put these into longer term storage, if you're thinking for trying to age your tobacco uh, or preserve it for a number of years, uh, then these can feel, these bale tops, the pressure can feel. Um, and that's why these might be slightly better. Again, this is, this is a screw top jar, but it has the seal you can see along the inside. Now, interestingly enough, Kilner, who make this particular jar, there are a few brands, say that this screw top jar can be reused, it's reusable, uh, but this little insert is not. So, to get a proper seal on your jar, right off the bat, that's doing a better job than this is, because this is a little dimple. That's not actually sealed properly yet, you know. Um, it is and it isn't. If you want to store tobacco in these for any given amount of time, you need to create what's called a relative vacuum. And that creates pressure on the seal, which holds the seal together and stops air from being able to leak out. I have heard it said that this will naturally form with the fermentation process and the aging process of tobacco on its own. So you'll naturally 
form itself, but you don't want to do that. Uh, you don't want to take that risk anyway, because these can't fail. So to create that relative vacuum, you need to use heat. And this is a danger as well, because I mentioned earlier on, heat's not great for your tobacco. Well, until you decide to smoke it. And then. We all know how that goes. So if I was making jam, which I sometimes do, um, what I would do is fill this with jam and then put this into a pot of boiling water. And then the heat on the inside, the difference heats up the air. When I seal it, uh, close it up, boil it, the difference in heat between the inside of the jar and the outside creates a relative vacuum. There's still air in there. It's not a complete vacuum, like, you know, outer space, but it's a relative vacuum. And uh, that gives it a good seal against the, uh, the outside. Um, you don't really want to boil this with tobacco in it. What you can do, I mean, you can, if you want, take that risk. I don't. So what I like to do is I like to, when I'm sterilizing the jar anyway, and that's another thing that I do, if you want to store it for long term, you imagine this is like food. Tobacco is a bit more resilient than your food, but it can grow mold and it can grow. So if you've got greasy hands or particulates, you know, wear gloves, use boiling water to sterilize your jars. It just makes sense. It's, it doesn't cost you much. Um, and it's just another, it's a small step to take to try and preserve your precious tobacco. It's expensive enough. So you put the tobacco in this and then you can sort of, or sorry, sterilize the jar and boil in water first and then quickly get the tobacco in. It is going to get heated slightly by the edge of the jar and then seal it up. And then you should get a, as the jar cools and the air inside it cools, you should get a relative vacuum. Easier to check on this than this. I wouldn't use these jars for that. First of all, because I can't check that there's a relative vacuum without some expensive machine. And second of all, because these bale lids are known to fail. So if I want to store it for a couple of years, it goes into one of these. And then how I know that that is sealed is that it pulls this little clicky button down. And then I know that there's a relative vacuum um, in that jar. And that's pretty good. You've got air in there. Um still not a, a complete vacuum but that's good for storage and that'll do years many years probably better still if it's in a tin these are sealed at the factory and that's a good seal that's a good vacuum seal you can age them in the tin many people have great success using a tin i have seen 10 year old tins opened and the tobacco is in perfect lovely fresh moisty condition but i have heard some nightmare tales not all tins again are created equal and i've heard some tins might rust and some tins might degrade uh, and i have witnessed myself several tins where i wanted to combine them and to put them in a jar where the vacuum seal wasn't actually there and you opened it you could usually tell because the tins dimpled in slightly again because of that suction on the inside um so you can store them in tins. That's that's a very good way of storing as well. These jars, these tins. Now, this last method. There is a method I'm missing, which I'll, I'll briefly touch on, actually. So the other method you can get is a vacuum pack. And if you vacuum pack, the problem with the vacuum pack is it's storing generally in plastic. Um, and again, we don't like plastic touching our tobacco, so that's not super. But the vacuum pack sucks all the air out, and it's a perfect seal. And they will last for years. Um, doesn't get rid of all the air. And we'll talk about that in a, in, a, in, a, in a second. Now, this final method. This is a Mylar bag. Like everything else, not all are created equal. You can get very cheap ones from 3mm th thick, 5mm thick. This is 7mm thick Mylar bag. This is what, this is food, food standard. This is what the military used to store their meals in. MREs, meals ready to eat. This will keep light and air away from your tobacco for a long time. Now, you, there are expensive machines you can get to seal these. But if you run an iron along or a pair of uh, hair straighteners, that will melt the plastic together. And you can test that it's a seal. And much like these, that will be its seal. That'll be a proper seal. And these, these could last 15 to 20 years or more. Um, 
the last little option then and this is where the, the real crux comes between aging and, and preserving there are two types of processes that happen to your tobacco when it's aging there's aerobic which means with air and anaerobic without air when you seal in a jar like this you are trapping a small amount of air small amount of oxygen and even if you use a vacuum packer there's still a little bit of air between the particles of tobacco you're not getting rid of all the air if you use these oxygen absorbers you can remove the air entirely now there's nothing to stop you from using these oxygen absorbers in one of these or in one of these if you want to try and you know create the vacuum seal in these so this method would also apply to this um but if i'm going for the long term and that's if you want to preserve your tobacco if you want to try and keep your tobacco as it is if it's an aromatic and you want to maintain that flavor you want to keep the oxygen away you want it to be stored say your zombie apocalypse supply you want to keep it there for a long time then you might want to consider using oxygen absorbers the only issue is as soon as i open this pack of oxygen absorbers they start to absorb oxygen and become less useful so you need to save up a lot of bagging or jarring for the same time and i used to use and have been using a lot of these jars and using that method where i heat it up and wait till i hear the dimple go down afterwards and then i know it's safe and sealed and i've been keeping air on it but i have recently thought to put away some tobacco for maybe longer term storage in case there is a giant tax price hike or certain blends become unavailable it's you know i'm not trying to doomsday or or spread worry but it's nice to have a supply there um so i'm gonna put a few tins away as i can as and when i can and i've decided to store them in these mylar bags to preserve I've got to keep some of it out in jars like this or this to use and smoke over the next you know several months but i'm going to put some away in these mylar bags and why i've decided to use these mylar bags over these jars is first of all these seals can't feel whereas once this is sealed it won't feel if it's sealed correctly it won't feel um second of all these are breakable smashable they're very big whereas if you tuck the tobacco under this cut it off where you need to that is a small small brick it's not as heavy as this it's not as breakable okay this can be reused these are cheaper even good ones you can get them really cheap don't cheap out this is your precious tobacco we're talking about but i think you know it was 30 pounds i got 50 of these bags and this bag of oxygen absorbers uh so the choice is yours do you want to preserve your tobacco how long do you need to preserve it if you're going to smoke within a couple of years these are probably fine if you're looking five to ten years i'd advise maybe this perhaps these leave it in the tin also a good option i have heard that there are some wise people who put these tins inside bags like this or inside the the oxygen that will help as well because part of the problem is that these start to rust eventually so you store these take away the outside oxygen that's a clever way of making these last even longer these just are absolutely useless baggies are good but put them inside a tupperware or a jar as well those are my opinions so what i'm gonna do when i sit when i when i put some of these together is i'm gonna try and age um some of it i'm not gonna remove the oxygen i'm not going to put some one of these in i'm going to seal it up with the oxygen in there and that'll allow it to get both the aerobic and anaerobic uh aging and then for some of them i'm going to remove the oxygen because that's the crucial thing that'll, that'll deteriorate them and maybe i'll do a follow-up in five to ten years time to tell you how it went which was a better method maybe maybe not we'll see we'll see how it goes but uh thanks for listening anyway and i hope maybe you learned something uh happy to take all in any comments if anyone has anything they want to tell me that i've missed out or share for anyone else um we're all always learning so uh yeah thanks for watching cheers and i'll see you next time